Okay, so we're going to give this another try. Um, third time's a charm, I guess. Apologize for the lack of terrain and everything. I'm down here in my storage room so I could get a little bit of quiet to do this with. Um, the basic idea here is we've got your Plucky Tommies, their two inch mortar team, a lieutenant, this is the squad corporal, <clears throat> excuse me, the Bren team, and the rifle team. Opposing them, we have the Germans with a rifle team, an MG42 team, and a squad sergeant. So, at the beginning of each turn, we're going to roll some dice. And the objective of the British here is to get rid of the Germans from this nice little house over there. Uh, they haven't been paying their rent and they're lowering the property values and such. So we're going to roll five dice and we're going to see what we can activate this turn. And I apologize for the crappy camera work. I'm really not very good at this and I'm trying to grab things through the lens of the camera. So, five dice for the British. Okay. Well, we have a four, two fives. These are going to give us extra chain of command points that we can use to interrupt the game sequence or do other nifty things, but for the purpose of this tutorial, they're not really going to be used. Now we've got this four. That's a senior leader. So that's our lieutenant here. Good old lieutenant. And then we have a two and a one. Now the two will activate a squad and the one will activate a team. So, just for the sake of argument, we're going to make this a three and give the British another one. Just for the sake of this tutorial to show you some of the things we can do. Wow, these red dice really don't show up. I'm um, sorry, crappy camera. So, we're going to have the British for this turn two ones, a four, and a three. To let them do all the stuff they want to do. So, we're going to try and set up an assault on these Germans. It's probably not going to go very well, but we're going to give it a shot anyway. Over here, the MG42 team is on Overwatch because they're dastardly and they do things like that. So we're going to need to find a way to deal with that and get our boys from this cornfield to take out this rifle team. And this is how we go about doing that. The first thing that we need to do is get rid of these shock points. These are negative morale points basically on the unit. Uh, they've been shot at in the past. So the first thing we're going to do is take our four and activate our lieutenant. Now our, our uh, lieutenant has four act activations and his command radius is 18 inches. If this was the platoon sergeant he'd only have three in a 12 inch radius. But this is the lieutenant, so we're going to take these four actions. We're going to use the first two to take these two points of shock off of the rifle team. Give them a nice rousing speech and they're ready to go again. This one on the Bren team isn't going to be a huge problem, but we have two more activations so we might as well pull it off. And for the purposes of this uh, tutorial, that last activation isn't really going to be useful. He could use it to activate the Bren team or possibly this two inch mortar team, but we have all the stuff we need to do that with over here. So for the time being, he's done with for now. Now, the next thing that we're going to want to do is take care of this MG42 team that's on Overwatch. We could either shoot at it with the Bren team or we could use the two inch mortar to do smoke or drop smoke on them. We could actually do both. So, we'll use our first one on the Bren team and fire on them. It's not going to be particularly effective because they're behind cover. But we're going to give it a shot anyway. Now a Bren fires six dice. It has two crewmen that assist them, but since they're crewmen, they don't get to actually uh, participate in the fire. So we're going to take six dice and we're going to roll them. Now, in Chain of Command, there are two ranges to shoot at, close and effective. Close 
is anything 18 inches or, or closer. Effective is anything over 18 inches. And you're either firing at green, average, or veteran troops. That's it. The Germans are average, bog standard German grunts, and we are under 18 inches, so we need fours, fives, or sixes on, these, on each of these dice for each one of them to be a hit. So we're going to roll them, and we've got four hits. It's better than I rolled the last time I filmed this. These Bren Gunners are getting better, I guess. So now, we're going to need to see what these four hits do. And that's also very simple. There's only three things we need to look out for. Is he in the open? Is he in light cover, like this cornfield? Or is he in hard cover, like this stone wall is? So, since he's behind the stone wall, we'll inflict a point of shock on a five and a kill on a six. So we're going to roll these dice. Oh boy, this is a lot better than it was last time. Well, this two and this four don't do anything. But these two sixes are going to kill two men in this team. Now, the squad leader is within four inches of the team. He's working with the team. And we've got two deaths, so we need to see if he died too. So we're going to roll this d6 and... We want to get less than the number of hits, so if it's a one or two, the squad leader is going to bite it. Oh, nope. So we're going to knock off this rifleman and one of the crewmen for the MG42. So now, the MG42 is at half effectiveness because his loader is gone and so is the other guy that can take over for him. Now later on in their turn, <clears throat> the German squad leader could take one of these guys with one of his activations and bring him over here and say, hey, you lot, help this man out. But he hasn't. So right now, we've already halved their firepower. But we don't want to take any of those because we're going to be going through the open at close range. So we're going to fire this 2-inch mortar with smoke at them. And we're going to say that this cornfield blocks line of sight. So if we had line of sight, we'd roll 1d6 and need a 3 or higher to be on target. But we don't, so we need a little bit more. It's a 5 or 6 to be on target, and if not, it'll deviate. Now, well, it deviates. So, we're going to push the smoke back, because I believe a 2 is long. I'm probably wrong with that, actually, but for the purposes of this, it's not really going to matter. The smoke was long. That didn't help. So now, oh, stand up. So now, we're going to send in the boys. Probably going to eat it from this machine gun fire. Now, in order to pin him down, we need more points of shock than men left. Equal to or so. There's no shock on him though. So he's going to be able to fire. So we're going to send the troops in. To do that, we're going to take that three that we rolled earlier and activate the corporal. A unit of men will not assault if they don't have their leader to make them. So on a two or a one, you can't make them assault. But we've got a three, so in they go. And this probably isn't the wisest thing, but it's just going to show you the mechanics. So at this point in time, the German MG42 on Overwatch could shoot at them as they're crossing this field. And that's very simply just, I'm on Overwatch, I'm going to shoot. Normally he'd have eight dice, but he doesn't have his loader, so he's got four dice. We'd roll them, and it'd be two hits, and there'd be one kill. But we're just going to go ahead and not pay attention to that just for the purposes of showing you the close combat. Now close combat is pretty simple. You start with the number of men you have on each side and it's simultaneous. So there's seven men on the British side, six on the German side. So six dice, we get two extra for having a leader. That is a level two. So any squad leader is a level two. And he's also got a submachine gun, so there's another two. So they're rolling ten dice. The Germans 
have six dice, no leader, but they are defending cover. And the British moved. Now, I forgot to do this, but the British would have rolled two dice. Got five inches. And say that's close enough. So they're going to get two dice for the two dice that the British moved across the open, representing them shooting on the way in. And they're going to get two more dice for each, or one more die for each two dice they already have for defending this. So that's pretty big. So the British get ten. So we're going to roll these really quick. We want fives or sixes. Fives or sixes will kill, and a six will give a point of shock. It's backwards from shooting. So we got that was a six. Anyway, that was a six, five, six, and five. So two points of shock and four dead. And that's a lot better than they did the last time I filled this. So we're going to put one of these red dice out for two points of shock. And four dead. Now, the Germans, since it's a simultaneous, will strike back with these. So they start with six, seven, eight for their movement, and four more for defending this wall. So I'm going to get these dice out. Twelve dice, right back at the British. Oh boy. That's one, two, three, four, five, six dead, and three points of shock on the British. That's actually exactly what happened to them the last time. So, put our three points of shock on, and normally they would roll to see if their leader was dead too, but you can't roll less than a six. So, unfortunately the leader bites it. Wasn't a very good day for the British. Um, they're going to have to pull back with this guy. Take a morale check uh, for losing their leader, which is, again, very simple. Just roll one dice. And on a one, we go over a nice little morale sheet. Junior leader killed. On a roll of a one, they lose one point from their force morale. Force morale is anywhere from... 8 to 11, and once you reach uh, once you reach 3, you start taking negative effects to your command, and once it's gone, you've lost morale and the army runs away. So, we've lost quite a few British today, and it's going to be the Germans' turn. So, the Germans roll their 5 dice. So, the six means the next turn is going to be British. Five is a chain of command dice. We have a junior leader, another junior leader, and a team. If I had a German senior leader I really needed to activate, I could put these two together to make a four. But I can't divide this down to make a two. But this isn't going to be terrible based on what we have. So we're going to use this three to activate our junior leader. And he's going to pull one man. Well, first he's going to pull one point of shock off. Then he's going to pull this man from the rifle team into the MG42 team. So we'll remove that wound marker. Now that leaves one man with one point of shock over there. That's not great. But we're just going to shoot back at this Bren team before bad things happen to us. So now that we've got our loader again, we're back up to eight dice. And eight. So we're going to roll those. And it's the same thing to hit the British. A four, five, or six. So we've got four, five hits. Now, the British are in the cornfield, which gives them light cover. So ones, twos, and threes are no effect. Fours and fives are shock, and sixes are kills. So we re-roll our dice. Kill a man. Two points of shock. Three points of shock, I'm sorry. 
So, three points of shock, and kill him in. That's basically how Chain of Command works. There's lots of other nuances to the game. Um, nothing too complicated, uh, but that's just a simple overview of how some turns go. Um, I may have done a couple things wrong. I know that you know this guy's going to have to fall back. Um, this guy's not in a very good spot either. But And they're probably a bit more than four inches away that they needed to be. But just for the uh, purposes of this tutorial, that should work out. That's basically how Chain of Command works. I'm going to try and upload this guy, and then I'm going to set everything back up and refresh my memory on this, and we will try bolt action next. Trying to do the same exact thing. Let's see what happens to our plucky Pratamis. Alright, thanks a lot. Have a good one.